from die-hard surf dudes to the cocktail-sipping elite of Saint-Tropez, at one time we've all stared out at the mirror of the ocean and contemplated its waves. While they are a ubiquitous feature of our shorelines, no two waves are ever the same. Some curling over perfectly, some surging chaotically up the beach to soak your trouser leg. But what are they exactly and where do they come from? Well, you can learn a lot by simply watching the waves. Cocktails are optional. No, cocktails are essential. Seeing them line up ready to break along the shore, ocean waves look like organised heaps of water that have travelled from far out at sea to finally wash up at our feet. And when they break, pushing up the beach, that certainly seems to be the case, but watching the procession of waves a little further out tells a different story. Seabirds and message-bearing bottles float on the surface of the sea, and as a wave passes we see them rise and fall, but they ultimately stay in roughly the same place. That's because it's not the water that's heading for the shore, it's the energy within the water. But as we all know, energy can't just be created out of nowhere. The energy must come from somewhere. You might think that most waves are caused by the tides, but you'd be wrong, sorry. You could say that tides themselves are actually massive waves caused by the moon and the Earth's spin, but that's not what we think of as waves. Some giant waves are caused by catastrophic underwater earthquakes or weird fluctuations in the atmosphere, but pretty much every wave you'll see in your lifetime was caused by the wind. Even on a still day, the waves breaking out on the beach were born far away in a bluster. It all starts with still water, like this. Wind blowing across the surface drags some of the water along with it, creating a regular series of lumps that are known as capillary ripples. These are only small, and the surface tension of the water itself is enough to flatten them back out again. But if the wind keeps on blowing, it's now got the lumps and bumps of the capillary waves to push onto, carrying them along, transferring more energy from the air into the water. Once they get a bit bigger, they're now called gravity waves, since now the wave is all about fighting gravity trying to pull the water back to equilibrium rather than the water tension. Out at sea, the wind keeps blowing and the waves keep growing until the whole of the surrounding area is known as a wave sea, which basically looks like a chaotic mess of choppy waves moving in all directions. More wind, usually thanks to stormy conditions, helps these waves reach impressive heights. They can stretch up to 10 metres from trough to peak in a fully developed sea. Once they've got enough energy from the wind, waves spread out from the wave sea and begin their long journey across the open ocean as swells. The size of waves in a swell depend on how fast the wind was blowing, how long it was blowing for, and the area over which it was blowing. That's known as the fetch. And this is where it gets really cool, because from what I've described, you've now got waves of all shapes and sizes, all traveling across the oceans with different heights and spacings and speeds. And it's all thanks to the wonders of physics that they tend to get bunched up into something called wave trains, separated by relatively calm water. Within these trains, the positive interaction of different waves can pile the water even higher until they reach astounding heights. These rogue waves, as they're known, can seem to come out of nowhere. And some have been reported to tower over three stories tall, appearing to sailors like an unexpected wall of water in an apparently calm sea. Neatly organised into their trains, waves travel thousands of miles uninterrupted across seas and oceans before they reach their dramatic ends on our beaches and shorelines. But how and why do they build up and break? Well, remember it's not the water itself travelling all those miles from the middle of the ocean to the beach, it's the energy. Within a travelling wave of energy, the water it passes actually follows a circular orbit. First a little bit backwards, then up, then a little bit forwards, then back down again. This movement tugs on the patch of water in front, making it move in a circular path, and that allows the wave of energy to move forwards. Water beneath the surface is also affected by this movement. It's encouraged to go in its own small circles, diminishing in size as you go down increasingly deep. And this helps explain how a wave grows as it reaches the shore. 
As it approaches shallower water, the circular orbit of the lower waters start to come into contact with the sea floor and friction with that hard ground slows it down. Meanwhile, the water above is less affected by the friction, so it keeps going at its original speed. And to get out of the way of the slower water beneath it, the only direction it can go is up. This makes the waves grow in height, but they're left unsupported as the lower parts drag along the seabed. So eventually, a wave moving forward will find itself with nothing underneath it at all and it collapses into a dramatic breaker. And the type of breaker you get depends on how steep the beach is beneath the waves. Shallowly dipping shorelines encourage spilling breakers that collapse in a chaotic swathe of foam, while steeper beaches produce plunging breakers where the water curls over over in those perfect tubes sought out by the surfing pros. So, waves are really just energy. Energy making water travel in circles and energy being passed from one bit of water to the next. And the energy that's carried them so far doesn't just vanish. Wave action is responsible for the erosion of cliffs and beaches around the world. And it can even be harnessed to turn the relentless up and down motion into electricity. So, the next time you sit contemplating the surf, spare a thought for the long journey that the waves have taken and the fearsome storms that have given them life. And if waves really float your boat, give this video a like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more great ocean videos, head on over to the BBC Earth channel for loads of exclusive Blue Planet 2 content. And if there's a Pacific subject that you'd like us to cover, let us know in the comments below. For now, I will just wave goodbye. Sorry, I mean, you know me, come on, puns. They're so good, they're great. Right? No? Okay, well, uh, until next time.